Hello, and due to popular demand, The Clan Show is back, your one-stop shop for all clan fans. We've got all your favourite regular segments like player interviews, player challenges, as well as competitions, a chance to win this Valentine's Day limited edition jersey. But we've also got new segments like Goal of the Month. In fact, let's get started with a new segment, Clan Videos of the Month. First up, it's a video from my four-year-old nephew. He recently came up from Blackpool to visit Brayhead, and I think it's, well, it's safe to say that it made an impression. Yeah, it's fair to say that my sister is absolutely delighted with me. Absolutely delighted. Right, our next video comes just before last Sunday's Fight for a Flight Beach Ball Battle competition. I think it's also fair to say that David and Aidan made quite an impression on the home crowd there, waving as they scored goals and Klinsman's slides went down very well. However, just before they went out onto the ice, they treated us to a song about their favourite player. David and Aidan there, despite going on the ice, they want to feel the heat with Mike Hammond. Fair enough, right? And our last video comes from the Levitt family. Clan forward Alex Levitt took his wee boy Leo out onto the ice this week. And I think it's, I think it's fair to say that he hasn't quite grasped the basic fundamentals of hockey yet. Right, get your clan show videos into us for next month's show by either tweeting the club or even me directly. Just get it out there onto the internet. Right, it's now time for our goal of the month. And I think it's no surprise who scored this one. Have a look. Penalty shots. Hammond, good work from him. Exquisite finish from Mike Hammond. Took it round, Brandon Benedict, creating a bit of space for himself. And fired it past Stephen Murphy. One minute 20. Yep, fantastic goal there from Mike Hammond. And no surprise, really. He's been on absolutely phenomenal form. I think he scored around 21 points in the last 10 games. That is red hot. Long may it continue. Right, it's time now for our featured player interview. Another man who's been on red hot form, Matt Becker, has been leading the Elite League for points for pretty much all of the season. So what better way to reward him than taking him to fly a kite? <laughs> Hey, man, how you doing? Very good, how are you? Yeah, you ready for your interview? Yeah, sure. And we're also going to do a bit of kite flying. I thought it's like a traditional kind of European thing to do. You might enjoy it. We'll kind of fly a kite if you're up for it. Oh, really? Uh, kites were actually invented by 5th century Chinese philosophers named Mo Di and Lu Ben. You know a lot about kites then, yeah? Yeah, I'm uh, kind of an expert. Well, this is uh, this one, I've spent several pounds on this one, so I think this should be a really good kite. Should we go and take it up the hill and give it a go? There's yeah. no wind, so... Yeah, let's go try and get it in the perfect. air. <laughs> Hi, I'm uh, Matt Becca, number 26 for your Brayhead clan. Uh, how would I describe my style? Um, I would say I'm an offensive player who likes to set up his teammates and uh, you know try and play an all-around game. Right, so I've not actually opened this yet, so I'm, I've got big expectations of... Oh, how much did you end up paying for this thing? Honestly, 
Uh, multiple pounds. Multiple pounds. So Several it's, pounds. It's got to be good then. Well, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to see it because it's nothing but the best for you, man. Nothing but the best. Right, here we go. It looks pretty colourful. What's your favourite colour? Hope it's all of them. Yeah, I like them all. It's, there you go. Do you want to get this. out? I've got the instructions. Do you want to try and... Well, it looks like we're going to have to attach some stuff here. Oh, dear. What would you say the wind is here? I'm just going to check the, the Beaufort the Beaufort scale. Um, I think we would call this calm winds. It's quite calm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. the description is smoke would rise vertically <laughs> in this kind of wind. I think that's probably where we're at. Can make it a challenge. Okay, but we've, we've done all the instructions. Are you ready? Yeah, we're just, just going to run down there. Just launch it. Just launch it into the air. Yeah. That was really muddy! <laughs> oh, I can't stop. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Sorry, man. I don't think that's. Oh, oh. Oh, I'm gone. I'm gone. I'm gone here. Let's carry on with the interview. All right, here we go. So, can you tell us a little bit about growing up in Ontario and uh, your introduction to hockey? Let's grab a, let's grab a seat over here. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's. Like any kid from Canada, pretty much. I just, I think I started skating when I was three and then uh, started playing hockey when I was four. Three, that's the golden age, isn't it? Yeah, that's pretty For common hockey age. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, I just played at the local rink. It's probably a five minute drive from my house, not even. Could you grown up supporting a team as well? I mean. Oh yeah, I've been a big Toronto Maple Leafs fan yeah. for, you know, as long as I can remember. And uh, yeah, I mean, as soon as, you start playing, you kind of, every kid wants to make the NHL and, yeah. you know, be a professional hockey player and uh, you just kind of go with it as long as you can and see where it takes you. I mean, and, you know, it takes you to a lot of cool places and you get to meet a lot of interesting people, so. You've been to quite a few places. Is there anywhere in particular that you've, other than the clan, obviously, <laughs> where have you particularly liked in North America? Do you feel that was your, your big team, really, that you played for and had, had the most fun? Um, I mean, I guess I'd say Florida Everblades, probably, um, just because obviously you're living in Florida, you know, you can go to the pool, to the beach, go golfing whenever you want. And, and you played there with Scott uh, Pitt as well, didn't you? And Lee Salters, another ex clansman as well. Yeah, yeah, I played and actually lived with both of those guys at various times. And, wow. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun uh, being down there with them and kind of getting to experience, you know, playoff hockey and yeah. eventually winning everything. So it was, it was really cool to, to do it. in there casually, winning everything, not a problem well, there. It's, right? just, it's cool to do it with, you know, the, the guys that you enjoy being around and you know, you, you genuinely like his people. Yeah. So it makes, makes a big difference. And tell us, obviously you won the, you picked up the Kelly Cup as well over in North America. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the journey to that as well? Because obviously picking up trophies and silverware is what it's all about really at the end of the day. Yeah. I mean, we were, uh, we were kind of a middle of the pack team throughout the regular season. And then uh, when the AHL season ended, we got some guys sent down and uh, kind of gave us that extra little push. And yeah. From there, we just we kind of rolled. To be honest, I think we swept the first round and then won the next three rounds in five games. So it was it was closer than that. Obviously, we won a lot of overtime games and stuff like that. But um, it was, see little parallels then, almost like with the clans. Obviously, clans sitting in the middle of the pack at the moment. There, a few changes kind of happened and things starting to click as well. But you've also played with Scott Pitt in those times as well. Interesting little parallels and you're yeah. like repeating <laughs> themselves. We hope. Hopefully, that would be that'd be great. Yeah. So then after that kind of system kind of finishes North America, you, you kind of look into other kind of things for other opportunities and then coming over to Europe is obviously a big decision. What was going through your, your head at the time and, and, and coming over, it was Germany, wasn't it? It was your, yeah. your first move yeah. over to Europe. Germany was my first stop and uh, <clears throat> I'd thought about it the year before and then ended up playing one more year in North America. And then uh, that summer, a coach I used to play for in junior called me and was coaching in Germany. Um, so I figured, you know, that would be a, Good opportunity to go over here with someone you know and a Canadian coach and things like that so yeah I figured it was a good time and uh, I was lucky enough to be able to go over with two other guys that I'd played with before great um, so it was kind of a nice little a little comfort zone yeah for even though you're going all the way to Germany you still have you know guys you know from home and you can still speak English to people if you need to yeah so you're not you know you're not going crazy you can yeah. talk to someone yeah so it was that was good and you know it was a good experience over there and and then over to Italy then as well, so you start doing the kind of tour. You went to Italy and then Slovakia, yeah. which must have been really interesting. Do you ever talk with Richard Hartman about playing over in those leagues? Yeah, yeah, he asked me about guys every once in a while and just yeah. kind of, you know, when I got here and then he came pretty early on in the season and he just asked me how I enjoyed it. And, yeah. uh, 
you know, just I know a couple of Slovakian words, so <laughs> let's use those on him every once in a while. But... <laughs> just all the time, keep you in his mind. Yeah, keep using them. No, and then that obviously then leads to your time coming over to to Brayhead as well. How did that kind of deal kind of come about? Was it something you'd thought about before? Were you, were you thinking about going back to North America or anything like that? Were you still up for kind of doing a bit of a tour, really? No, I was. You know, I don't think I'll play in North America again. Yeah. Um, and I mean, last year when I left Italy, I had talked to Pity, obviously, and uh, Ryan. And I was close to coming um, probably about January, February-ish. Yeah. But then, you know, for whatever reason, it didn't work out. And uh, so then this summer, I was actually at Lee Salter's place uh, for right. a pool party. <laughs> and he was just kind of asking me what we were, what I was going to do next year and yeah. things like that. And I was like, oh, I don't know. And he was like, oh, we, you know, you should go to Brayhead. And... Cheers, Salts. Well done, Salts. <laughs> Still working as an agent for us yeah, as well. That's good to know. I in think the he's still waiting for his cut from Finner on that one. <laughs> Maybe waiting a while there. Maybe <laughs> waiting a while. So I guess the big question that all the kind of fans will obviously want me to ask: with you've had such a big impact on the season as well so far, and it's been great to see the chemistry, not just yourself and Peter, but any of the lines that he's been on, and then obviously Hammond coming in as well. It's been great to see. You thoughts for next season and thoughts for your kind of future? Has there been much of that in your mind? Is it ever in the mind for next season, or is it a case of waiting to uh, the end? I mean, I think it's it's always on the back of guys' minds as the season winds down. Mm. Um, but it's it's more just wait and see what happens as you know as we finish out and then into the early summer or whatever happens. Uh, mm. You know, I've I've enjoyed my time here obviously, and it's it's been great. Um, but you know, you never know what could happen, and yeah, you know, it's just pretty much wait and see. Can you just say yes? I'm definitely going to sign for Brayhead Clan next season, and we'll get it on camera. I, I don't think I can do that because someone well, will hold me to it. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, what we'll do then, we'll practice kite flying instead then. Thank you very much, okay, man. Thank and you. what I promise to do is get you up to speed with kite flying before you leave. Let's give All it right, a go. Perfect. Okay, you might be on a cut here because this could be disastrous. <laughs> well, there we are. A big thanks to Matt Becker there. I'm just so glad he didn't break his legs running down that hill. I would have been in everyone's bad books. I know that. Big thank you there to Matt Becker. Great stuff. Right now, it's time for our five puck time trial challenge. The players have to put the five pucks into the goal in the quickest time. A second is deducted for every puck scored. Three seconds will be deducted if they hit the top pipe. Uh, taking on the challenge this month is Scott Arson, Alex Levitt, and head coach Ryan Finnerty. Who gets the quickest time? Let's have a look. Well, there you have it. We've seen the times. Let's get them up there on the leaderboard. Let's have a look at the leaderboard now. And as you can see there, it's an early lead then for Alex Levitt. A great time from him. Not a bad start at all. But I tell you what, not a bad time for the head coach there. Not bad for an ex-pro. Great stuff, Ryan Finnerty. Right, well, there's still plenty of time for other players to get up there on the board. I'm sure they'll shave a few seconds off that in the upcoming months. Right now, it's time for another package for you, and it's not all about the players here on the clan show. There's plenty of off-ice staff and fans that keep our club ticking over and being the best team in the Elite League. We decided to have a chat this month with our kit man, David McLeod. Have a look at this. Once everything is hung and aligned, we're going to come into our main dressing room, and we are going to begin by getting everything ready so first thing we're always going to do when we come in just to make sure things are perfect for the game is we're going to get our fans on our heaters on and then we are going to get ourselves organized i'm david i'm the head equipment manager here at the clan now uh, i've been here since the start of the year i uh, got picked up in the summer after quite a lengthy interview process and uh, just loving it a good night you won't see me 
the minute you see me, that's when something's gone wrong. You know, a good day is when we go unnoticed. You know, we, whether it's myself or the guys that help us out on the bench and at practice. Um, but when we have to do things, you'll see us grabbing sticks, we're fixing skates, sharpening skates. We are doing more laundry than you can imagine. We are constantly on the phone making orders. There's an endless paperwork trail. You're making, you're doing simple things to make everyone else on the ice's job easier and you just have to roll with the punches because hockey just throws up all sorts of crazy problems for you. So now seven hours to face off. Our Valentine's jersey are now hung. We have a whole trolley full of towels that are going to have to get folded away. Fridge needs restocked. Skates need sharpened. But I reckon with the way the room's looking now, with the jerseys hung and everything ready, we're going to be in for a really successful, well-organised day. And you mentioned we, uh, so is it, is it not just you that's involved in this role then? Definitely not. I'm here, you know, 24 hours a day near enough. But midweek, I have Calm, our bench assistant, who takes time out of his own week, volunteers with the team, and does everything to make my job easier, which makes the guy's job easier. And that's great. Midweek, Calm then comes in as part of our game night team along with uh, Ian, or what is more commonly known as Horse, <laughs> very experienced equipment manager, he's worked with Team GB Youth, he's worked in SNL teams, he's been here in the clan in the past, really knows his stuff, um, great guy to work with and learn from. Above and beyond that we have Aaron and Evan who are our two stick boys, who if I can't do something and can't leave the bench or Horse can't leave the bench, then they could be anywhere, they can be in the locker room in between periods, they'll miss parts of the game in order to make things better for our guys. It seems yeah. like there's a really nice atmosphere as well. I noticed it was Callum's birthday at practice here today as well and the guys had a little surprise for him. Yeah, that, that was that was a nice touch. Uh, that was all orchestrated by uh, Captain Keith. It's, I think it's a sign of how much value, I think, having Callum and our other kind of support staff is to the guys and that bit of appreciation, especially, you know, he's a volunteer. They're all volunteers. I mean, I'm the only guy that's really paid to be here but we all love it and that bit of recognition is really, it's a touch of class from our guys. I think it, it shows the quality of calibre of what we have in our dressing room. You mentioned about the quality and calibre of those guys as well. What's it like, what they like to deal with? Have you, have you had to kind of come down hard on your rules to make sure that they stay in line? It's a big group of guys in a, in a relatively small room, isn't it? Well, yeah, you get 21, 22 guys, depending on what we're de dealing with. Um, everyone has their own habits and routines and everyone's their own person, but at the end of the day, we have guidelines, we have expectations, you know, it's, we're in there all day, come in at eight in the morning uh, on game day, and we could leave it after midnight. Um, you know, we are here all day, this is our space, and, and we need it to be in a particular way to work for us, because if it doesn't work for us, we can help them do their job. So it's nine hours to puck drop. We're just gonna, first of all, head into our players' lounge, and we are going to take all of the laundry and we're going to get it hung up in the back here in our players changing area. Now, and if there are any hopes for the rest of the season, is there any guys that you feel like need to kind of tidy up? Not, now's your chance to tell uh, them to get tidied up. Well you know Scott Pitt has finally started to hang his skates the right way. <laughs> uh, you know we, we are, we're, it's all about the details. Uh, and hey, finally you, you enjoying it or would you swap? <laughs> oh, I, I mean, I believe purple. I, I used to sit up in the stands for years, coming and going, and when this job came up, you know, it's, like I said, it's not a job anymore, it's a lifestyle and I love it. Big thank you to David McLeod there, a kit man's job, certainly not an easy one, much appreciated. I'm sure he could tell us quite a few secrets about the boys as well. However, we thought, why ask David to spill the beans when we can ask the players themselves? Back due to popular demand, it's 10 roster questions time, and in the hot seat this month, it's Callum Boyd. Okay, hey Boydie, are you ready for your 10 roster questions? Yeah, fire away. It's dramatic this, you can't get this wrong. <laughs> okay, okay. first question is, number one, best skater? Probably Arson. Arson, Scott yeah. Arson, good stuff. Strong skater. Strong skater. Best hands, best skills? Oh, maybe Hammond or Pity. Hammond or Pity. Yeah. Can I push you on, if you had to pick one of them, which would it be? Uh, Hammond. Hammond, oh, yeah. he's the one just to pick. Yeah, so just watching him with his hands sometimes, so the moves that he can pull. Fantastic, okay, toughest guy? Rosie. You're not going to mess around with that one then, eh? No, Straight away. Yeah, just rosy, safe bet. <laughs> Smartest guy? Um, oh, maybe Keitha. 
In, in what way? So is, that, is this hockey smarts, hockey yeah. IQ, or is this in just general intelligence? Hockey smart, he knows what he's doing. Right, but he doesn't know otherwise what he's doing? Is that what we're saying? Uh, I've not really quizzed him in that. I'm just trying to put you in a corner, literally yeah. in a corner with a question that puts you in a corner. Least smartest man on that note. Um, I'll vote for myself there. Are you going to take the hit on it? Yeah, I'll take the hit on that That's one, nice yeah. of you. Imagine taking the hit on that one when you avoided that question. <laughs> okay, here's a tougher one for you, ladies' man. Jordan Boessa. Oh. Jordan? Linguistic tongue. Oh, really? He's yeah. got the smooth move for oh, a young guy? For sure, yeah. Wow. Seeing him watching the ladies, you're like, teach me, mate, teach me. Wow, well, you've learned something here then. Fantastic. Most influential on the roster? Um. I'm going to say most of the, um, all of the guys, everyone's always helping each other out and yeah. letting you know if you can be doing something better on the ice. You can't just say everyone, unfortunately. I'm going to have to push you on. Who who'd, Wh- Who's influences Wh- you? Wharton. Wharton gives me a lot of tips what I can be doing better, so it's good having him. Right. Like defence, obviously, because he's behind me, obviously seeing what plays the forwards are making. Is he shouting at you a lot from behind? Not shouting, just <laughs> let just let me know what I can be doing better if I make a mistake, so that's good. Cool. Well, Wharton, a good one there. And worst music taste? Oh, all the Canadians. Yeah, I'm hearing a lot of country in there. Yes, yeah, yeah. country. I'm just like, here we go again. What would you prefer to have one? EDM music. <laughs> <laughs> that changes up the a atmosphere bit, somewhat, bit, doesn't a it? A bit of dance, you know, but I'm, I'm easy going. Just have you ever just tried turning up the BPMs when you go in there? Maybe it's country, but it's country, 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 oh, country. Yeah, when it's on, you just leave, you can't touch it. <laughs> Fair enough. Take offense. Yeah, you wouldn't move with that one. Okay, funniest guy on the roster? Probably Levy. Levy, and why is that? What has he got? Just some of the stuff he comes out with, he's just got to laugh. He, you, love, you love the guy, just the stuff that he says. Yeah. Keeps it light. Yeah. And here's the tough one, here's the tough final question. You're on board the Titanic. Obviously, we know what happens with the Titanic. I think we're all aware of our history there. Who is the first in the lifeboat with the women and the children? Who goes down with the ship? And whose fault is it in the first place? Probably say Sully would get in the lifeboat first. Sully's in there already yeah, there before it's going gone. down. Yeah, he's gone. Um, what was the second one? Who would go down with the ship? Keitha. Keitha, a hero. You make sure everyone's away first. It's captain, yeah, isn't it? It's captain. Good, good thinking. And finally, whose fault was it in the first place? Um, going to say Harry. Harry? <laughs> yeah, he, was, he wasn't paying attention. He was singing and dancing too much, so crashing the ship and icebergs. The navigator had too much fun that night. Oh, Boydie, well done. You've thanks. survived your 10 roster questions. Brilliant. Cheers. Yeah, quite a revealing insight into the club there. More 10 roster questions coming up next month. In the meantime, though, it's time for our competition. And if you'd like to win one of these limited edition Valentine's Day jerseys, all you have to do is answer the following question. Who was it that Matt Becker said or claimed invented the kite? Was it Modi and Luban, 5th century Chinese philosophers? Was it B, Sir Isaac Newton? Or was it C... Clan commentator Craig Anderson. (laughs) We do have a laugh here on the show, don't we? We do have a really good laugh. To enter the competition, you need to have three elements all included. At BrayheadClan.com, the correct answer, whether it be A, B or C, and the link to this show. You'll need all three elements to be included in the draw. Good luck with that. Make sure you enter the competition right now. But in the meantime, that's all we've got time for here on The Clan Show. We'll catch you next month. There you go, man. See, we got it up in the end eventually. Yeah, There's a little bit of wind there in the end. Kite flying's easy. Look, it's great. I mean, I hope Richie's getting a really good close up of that as well. Yeah. He's kind of going, man, oh, come on. There's a bed over there anyway. Let's go. Clans' next home game is this Friday against the Five Flyers. Face off is at 7 30.